So a lot of y'all are familiar with Delta 9 THC or just regular THC, but you may have seen on the market in the last few years, there's a couple of new products, Delta 8, Delta 9, Delta 10. What are all these different uh, THC molecules? So first, let's start with the basics. You have two main cannabinoids in cannabis. You have THC and CBD. There's tons of other ones, but right now, those are the two big ones. Uh, so CBD, as you all know, is the non-psychoactive, anti-inflammatory, some say anti-cancer uh, compound or molecule. Now, THC, on the other hand, is the psychoactive compound, and it also has a host of other health benefits, and them together have even more health benefits. So there is something to be said about how beneficial it is to use both of these compounds together and not just one or the other. So to really talk about Delta-8 and Delta-10 THC, we first have to talk about Delta-9. Delta-9 or Delta-1 in some academic resources is going to be plain old THC. That is the one that you know and love, the one that gets you high. Now, uh, Delta-8 is still THC. It has the exact same chemical structure as THC, except for one thing. There's one thing different. And that small difference actually means that Delta-9 THC and Delta-8 THC are isomers of each other. So an isomer is a molecule with an identical molecular formula, but a distinctly different arrangement of atoms. So this could mean that one atom is in a different spot, or it could also mean that a bond is different between the two molecules. Uh, and so that's what all of these different delta variants, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> that's what all of these different variants of the molecule of THC are. They're just slightly different molecular structures. So that kind of gets the, uh, the foundation of the differences out of the way. But what really is the difference between Delta-8, Delta-10, and Delta-9? Well, it's still very, very early in the research of these chemicals as far as their interactions with the human body. Um, I mean, studies have been going on as far back as the 1940s and earlier into cannabis, and even that's when Delta-8 THC was originally hypothesized, synthesized, and found was in the early 1900s. Um, of course, the war on drugs has made it substantially more difficult for those same kinds of research grants to be given out and to actually be carried out by scientists. But um, in, in recent times, it has been a little bit easier for scientists to start doing some more of these tests. The best way that I can describe what Delta-8 and Delta-10 are like is kind of like it's hard to describe you may feel something you may feel a high it's more of a head high i don't really get the whole couch lock body feel that you do from delta 9 thc um and so there's there is a market for it people that want to ingest cannabis in some form or another throughout the day without some of the more negative effects. Some people would say like the grogginess, sometimes the haziness, just really depends on how you consume, what you consume, when you consume. There's so many factors into it. I almost, I tell everybody, there is something out there for you. You just have to find it. It's like wine or beer. There's one out there that you'll like. You just gotta go and find it. So, um, Aside from psychoactive effects, what really is Delta-8 CBD? How do you get it, right? So the simple answer to that is you do a chemical process by adding either heat or acid or both to CBD. Now, CBD is what you could consider somewhat of a base cannabinoid. It breaks down into other cannabinoids that we know, such as THC. Uh, I do believe that CBD breaks down from CBN, I want to say. Uh, I'm not 100% on that, but 
there, there's like a chain reaction that goes on, breaks down into this, then this, then this, and this, kind of like radiation, uranium or something like that. Um, so that's the simple answer is that you add heat, you add acid, some time, and it may change the molecular structure of CBD into other things. So uh, if that's all you wanted to know, go ahead, click off the video, because now we're going to start talking about the long answer. So I'm going to set my drink down for this one. So as I stated earlier, uh, studies from the 1940s and on found that by adding ethanolic hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid into cyclohexane, the resulting product would have levels of delta-8 and delta-9 THC. So these were really early tests, and they weren't doing anything with, inten with the intention of ingestion. This was just science, basically. Uh, so like the ethanolic hydrochloric acid and the sulfuric acid and the cyclohexane is like uh, not something I would suggest you do to your own CBD at home. <laughs> um, but the results of that were a product that had delta-9 psychoactive THC in it coming from this non-psychoactive CBD. And that has major implications for us in modern times as well. We have other methods that are safer for use, still involving adding different acids and different procedures to see how uh, these molecules can be formed, right? And I actually have a crazy long list of molecules that um, some studies found would be synthesized from CBD in certain situations. So I'm just going to leave that list here. And you can see there's so many different kinds of THC, CBD, all of these things, HHC, uh, that are being produced by the degradation of CBD. And so you can take uh, certain processes and make these different compounds. So far, the only ones we know of are Delta-8, Delta-9, Delta-10, THC. But as you can see, there's so many other ones. Who knows what all these different chemicals do? And also what the interaction between these chemicals means for cannabis itself as a medicine. And now, even though all of these chemicals are being shown to be broken down with acid and heat, the heat is the key part of this, because that means that even on the plant, these chemicals are being broken down and made in small quantities, but they are there. So they are having some effect on the, uh, the impact on the body when it's ingested. So now that I've mentioned that heat and acid can molecularly change CBD, some of you may already be wondering, well, what happens if you eat it then? Our stomach is full of stomach acid and heat. So uh, one would assume that there would be these same kinds of